This is Dr. K. Let's look at the IRB form together. Please make sure you use the IRB form which already has my name entered in it. That's in the course site. It's one less thing for you to ask and one less thing for me to do. This is a complex form. On the next screen, we will look at the form together. That should answer a lot of your questions. This is a complicated form. Let's look it over together. Um, first of all, read through these instructions and follow them all. You will see a spot to put the project title and you are the investigator, fill that out. You are a graduate student. You already know that. You should have completed the UW Stouts Human Subjects training. Um, you will be required to include that certificate with this submission. So if you don't know where that is still from 729 or you never got a, the certificate, um, contact me and I can help you with how to find that. This already has my name and information on it. I do not sign it until I have approved it because my signing it says I'm approving what you've put here. I won't approve it till it's correct. All right, so here are some common areas where people get stuck. Are you doing this just to fulfill course requirements with no intention to share the results? You probably will want to share the results beyond your classroom at some point with someone, other teachers, your school. So there's no reason not to mark it. So, so mark this no, you're not doing it just to fulfill the course requirements. This one, are, would you consider publishing it or disseminating it? You may want to do a presentation at a conference about your, your research eventually. There's no reason not to mark this yes. You are using a systematic approach. Mark it yes. Is your intent to develop or contribute to scholarly knowledge? Yes. It says if you've answered no to all these questions and you won't have, you will have marked some of them yes. So don't stop there. Keep going. Are human subjects involved? Very likely yes, but in some cases it is no. Now, what is the purpose of the research? Sorry, I scrolled too far. Um, explain this in detail. The person reviewing this, if they don't understand what the purpose is, why you're doing the research, they will send it back. That slows down the approval process and it slows down when you can get started on your research. So better to explain it in more detail than not enough detail. Here I suggest you put the beginning of the semester, September, and the end, December. Um, if this is not fall semester, then January and May for spring semester. For some reason we're not scrolling. <clears throat> Your research may be exempt. If that's the case, the reviewer will tell us that. So mark any of these that apply, but that doesn't mean you don't have to submit this. You don't get to decide if it's exempt. Are your participants in a special population? For many people in the course, they, you will be working with minors, so mark that. Other than that, probably none of the special populations apply. Expected number of participants. You need at least three to five participants. If you're thinking you want to do it with one participant, I will warn you that if that student or person moves, refuses at some point to participate or whatever your, your research is done. So always plan to have at least three to five. Describe your participants, explain why you've chosen them, explain your relationship. If you're their teacher, say that. Um, most of the time you're not recruiting them per se because you're not offering them something to do this. Detailed procedures, be detailed, seriously. Okay, if you're doing an electronic survey, you need to fill this out. If you're not doing an electronic survey, you can skip this section. Risk and benefits. A lot of people think there's no risk to their research, but risks include things like failure to learn the intended information or feeling excluded if the students are not part of a group that's doing some special activity because they're taking part in the research. Um, usually your 
research will have minimal risks. If it's not minimal, you and I will be talking about it before you get to the point of filling this out. Will they benefit? Well, we sure hope so. So explain what the benefit is and explain what the benefits are to society at large. For example, if you're doing something with reading, the benefit to society at large is to have more literate population and citizens. Usually you're not offering them compensation and you really want to mark that no. If you are offering them compensation, there are extra questions asked. Okay, you almost certainly will know your subjects in action research. So answer this honestly. Can they be identified? Yes. Explain though how you're going to keep the data anonymous and how you will keep them confidential. You will use identifiers such as student A, student B, or student ID numbers and not put their names in anything or on any forms. You will need to get consent from both parents and guardians if you're working with minors and the minors too. If you're working with adults, you will be getting consent from them. All right, now Look over this checklist carefully because these are the things that have to be included. If you don't include them, then this will get sent back to you and to me and your research can't start until it's all complete. If you're using any questionnaires, any surveys, any data collection tool of any kind, it, a sample of it must be included. You need your human subjects training certification included here. Any other forms need to be included here. You do need the consent letter included here. All of that must be included when we send that to the IRB. I hope this has helped you with understanding how to fill out the form. Let me know what questions still persist.